Hello guys, my name is Pershing, and today we are back with a highly demanded series, uh, the Gem Editor Tutorial Series. Um, as Gates of Hell is coming out soon, I decided to revisit the series just because I know it's going to be more relevant once Gates of Hell comes out. And I will be doing tutorial videos on the Gates of Hell engine as well. But in the meantime, I decided to make, you know, another tutorial video. Because uh, I had some time and thought it would be very useful. Um, and I also noticed that you guys have been really liking the tutorial videos. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, today we will be focusing on camera work and more specifically kind of cinematic camera work. Uh, so if we go to F3 mode, and just to keep in mind, I am loaded in F3 mission mode. Uh, we want to go to triggers. So... What you want to do, you probably want to create, you know, add here. I'll just add so you guys can see. So call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it camera 2. Um, and it's just a template for me to look at. But what we're going to do is, in the beginning, depending on what you want, what cinematic, you know, uh, I guess look you want, you will add a delay at the beginning, as you can see here on the commands tab. Um, that amount of seconds depends on what you want, as I just said. Um, for example, on this occasion, I only put a two second delay simply because of the fact that I wanted the camera to be able to kind of lock on not immediately just because I wanted to make sure there was no lag and just prevent any performance issues on that end because I do know especially with the Men of War Assault Squad 2 engine if you kind of put a short delay sometimes that can affect performance in terms of things spawning in so that's simply a courtesy I put for the game engine to make sure it catches up and loads things in properly um, but you can do whatever you want and not in my case I'm just gonna add a delay of two seconds and the next thing we will do is add go to scene and it's called scenario this is a command and this is like there's a lot of things to cover here I'm just gonna cover the basics in this video um, the name that's simply the camera that you are gonna choose which we are gonna go over in a second um, most of these are pretty self-explanatory and usually you can experiment with a lot of these options. Um, but I usually turn these two off when I'm doing cinematics. The reason for this is it jumps right to the next camera so it doesn't, uh, how do I put it, smoothly transition so it doesn't actually jump across the map. When you turn these off, it cuts instead of jumps, if that makes sense. So if I had these two on it would either in the beginning actually if it was the smooth underscore begin it would go from wherever your camera was at in this when you press start on the editor to where the camera point begins so you really don't want that um an end simply means that to the next camera position it will swipe across the screen so in our case for this tutorial we will be doing uh those two options disabled to make things simple um, and everything else you can leave for now. So now what we have to do, um, actually before I do that, let me just disable the other one because I don't want that one going on. Um, we have to go do camera, which is also found by pressing seven on your numpad. Uh, so as you can see, I already have some things here, but I'm just gonna explain how it works and how we can experiment with them. So what I'm gonna do, okay, you're gonna right click, you're gonna add, uh, name it. I usually like to name it depending on like what's happening. So maybe we're gonna add it like uh, I don't know intro cinematic uh, Transition, I don't know. I'm just making something up Let's just try that. All right, so what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the spot on the map so on this scenario I'm gonna have some half track spawn here and they're gonna go up the bridge and engage the enemy. So what I'm gonna do, and even though this is gonna look very awkward, I'm just gonna have it start here. Uh, it's gonna be, you know, a little cinematic and an intro thing. We're gonna add, right click on keyframes, add a keyframe. 
So what this does here, it actually puts a marker in the exact position uh, you're at. So, and if you press preview, obviously nothing's going to happen, but it will bring you to each keyframe that you preview, uh, if that makes sense. Well, actually, sorry, uh, I have to take that back. Preview actually starts from the beginning, uh, no matter how many keyframes you start, unfortunately. But anyways, uh, you can add another keyframe, which will add at the same point. But say, let's, uh, I don't know, we didn't like, or we made a mistake, and we don't really want to delete. So I'm going to go to the second point, which will be up here. I'm going to update. So update simply moves that second keyframe to that desired position. Um, and then if you want another position, say I wanted it here, we just add another keyframe and there is the second position. Now, as you can see, there are seconds. So each of these seconds represents the amount of time in between each, or sorry, the time that each of those keyframes is triggered, if that makes sense, in the timeline. So at zero seconds, or the beginning of when that camera is triggered, we get key zero at one second. It would go to go to preview. Hold on, actually double click. My bad. Double click on keyframe one. It will bring you to that position. So zero and then one. Um, so in one second, at the one second mark, it will reach this point. If that makes sense. So I don't really want that. You know, I want something slow. I want something nice. Try five seconds is like a good little um, point that I use. It's a nice little transition point. Uh, I'll just put ten here. But as you can see, when we did that this blue line across the screen updated. So that actually blue line represents how smooth it will be going in between each point. Um, the longer the position is, so for example, if I extend this to, I don't know, 15. See how it gets smaller, the intervals? That's just saying it's a more, it's much slower. And then say I put it to eight. The farther part is, it means it's a fast transition and not very smooth, if that makes sense. It depends on what you want. But that's simply an indicator for you. Um, so I'm just gonna put it back at 10. Uh, if I press preview, you can see how it's very smooth. Um, and it goes up here. And then we'll go to the third and see it switch on the side in a second. Yep, and then it switches to came frame two. So we have that down. And then I'm just gonna put one more all the way up here. It's probably not even gonna look good. Uh, you definitely have to fiddle with you know exactly when you want things, uh, which takes time. But if we just preview that again, we got zero. And five seconds later, you can actually time it if you want. It goes to one. And then it goes to two. And we're <laughs> that was a little bad positioning, but then it goes to three. That makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna make this a little longer because uh, just for that sake. Um, and for my purposes, I usually like to do very long uh, cameras just to avoid, um, you know, any bad transitions. But then again, at a certain point, if you want to cover a different angle, you're not going to really put a keyframe all the way over here and then, you know, add it. You're probably going to want to make a separate camera and have it start over here and then just have that cut, if that makes sense. Um, and you can even time. There's actually a way to time like how much of a uh, transition there is. Um, but anyways, let's go back to here. Now that we have our camera, we want to go to name and intro cinematic. Oh, sorry. Intro cinematic. There it is. And then press OK and make sure it shows up there in the title bar. Now, here's the important part. You can't forget this. You need to know how many seconds this camera is. So now we're going to copy that delay. And we're going to make it 22 seconds. So now, after 22 seconds of delay, it will go on to another camera, or whatever that camera may be. In this case, I'm just going to put it to um, a secondary camera that I already created, which will probably be... I don't know. We can just choose like a random one. Uh, yeah, here's a good one. Ambush positions. We'll use that one. Uh, so then I go here. And go to ambush positions, make sure those two are off. Cool. Now, um, what it will say is well, actually, I want to make sure how many seconds that is first. Uh, that is 90 seconds. So, just for sake of you know showing you guys, I'm gonna make it 90 seconds. Um, I would recommend saving, you know, always save between each thing. 
Um, and now, if you want to play and test this, you can just see, you probably, guys probably already know what's going to happen. If we play one, two, that's two seconds. There's the camera. And there's a way to actually get the, rid of the continue bar too. Yeah, actually, well, <laughs> you can see I was a little, uh, wrong timing there, but you get the point. Um, if you time that right, you know, the half tracks will come into the camera at the right point. And then here it transitions to the second camera. Nice little cut there and very smooth camera work. Uh, this is really the key on how I do these cinematics from now on and how other YouTubes do, YouTubers do it. And you guys will probably know this from my other video. You guess the point. Um, let's finish here. Alright, now we load it in. Um, and I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't really know... I mean, if you guys have any specific questions, I mean, one more thing that I will cover, if we go to camera two here, and we go to scenario, um, there is a thing, where is it, force, oh yeah, force autocomplete, which basically, oh, sorry, not force autocomplete, sorry, uh, disable cancel. If you check that off, um, it will disable that continue button that you see at the top so you can, you know, get the full shot, um, and I'll just quickly show you that. Yeah, see, uh, hold on, let me go to F1. Yeah, it's not there anymore. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's tutorial. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. A little quick little thing. Um, hope it helps you. I'll definitely be covering more in the future, especially when Gates of Hell comes out. Alright guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Pershing. Cheers.